Here are the progressive news headlines for Wednesday, November the 4th. Presidential candidate Joe Biden has officially received the most votes for president in U.S. history. But wait, that does not mean he automatically wins because the Electoral College is still a thing. But uh, in late breaking news, Biden has taken the lead in Michigan and Arizona and Nevada and Wisconsin. This is the latest news I could come up with before getting on here today. He now leads in states worth 270 electoral votes. That's the number needed to win the Electoral College. So let us keep our fingers continually crossed. It would help to fight Donald Trump's full frontal assault uh, as he moves to steal the election. Uh, you know, uh, by having a lot of states and by having by having uh, that 270 number nailed down. So obviously you're all staying tuned and we appreciate you being here with us today as we as we live through this thing. Uh, you know, votes are still being counted. So stick with, uh, you know, stick with it. No winner is formally determined, but even so, as expected, Trump is falsely claiming the big win, despite many millions of voted votes yet to be counted. This is not a shock. Okay, if it's a shock to you, then you've been watching the wrong news. Advocacy organizations have been preparing for this situation as they predicted it would occur. And People are ready to respond. The Protect the Results Coalition will mobilize across the United States today with more than 500 demonstrations set to take place this afternoon as the vote continues with a trio of key battlegrounds at the center of the nation's attention. Wisconsin, which Biden is leading in, Michigan, which Biden is leading in, and Pennsylvania, which is God knows what's happening there. You can do your part to help make sure every vote is counted at protecttheresults.com. It is not too late to help out there. One thing we do know, I know it's a little early to call things officially, but one thing we do know is that it is not looking good for Kanye. He basically got two votes, himself and Melania. Ha! All right. But local officials, you know, are ready. They're there. They're counting every vote. We just have to remember to be patient and let these local officials do their jobs. They've been running a transparent uh, a machine in these different states as they possibly can. So there is pretty much no winner until every vote is counted. Um Basically, record, you know, record voter turnout is confirming what we already know. The election is a historic turning point for this democracy. So we need to hear everybody who comes out. All votes cast on or before Election Day count equally, by the way. And uh, just FYI, in case Trump tries to convince you or the right wing media or your uncle tries to convince you. Otherwise, federal law demands a full 35 days for ballot counting and election certification in all 50 states and D.C. Let's recall that in 1960. 1968, 1976, 2000, 2004, and 2016, there was no clear winner on election night. All things considered, <clears throat> the coronavirus, we should expect this year to be no different than, you know, those years in the past. In other positive news, all four congresswomen, known endearingly as the squad, have won re-election. Since taking office in January 2019, Representatives Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, all women of color, have electrified the left's progressive base and challenged President Donald Trump and his allies in AOC's race. There was a highly abnormal amount of outside spending to defeat her. One group, the Stop the AOC PAC, spent 68000 and some change dollars on digital advertising and voter outreach and opposition, but no, 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 no. She won. Her decisive win tonight sends a clear message. A bold progressive voice is stronger than corporate PAC money. In addition, our good friend right here on this side of me, Corey Bush, won last night. She won in the state of Missouri she is going to be the it's going to be the first time in history that a black woman representing Missouri is going to Congress. Cori Bush was one of at least 115 women of color running for Congress this year, a record breaking number, according to the Center for American Women and Politics. Bush 
who is both a nurse and a pastor, spoke openly on the campaign trail about her struggle with paying taxes and staying on top of bills. She has also been outspoken about facing homelessness and domestic violence at points in her life. In other words, she is a real person. Ah, how exciting. It's going to be awesome to watch her keep going. I'm exciting. Anyway, uh, she wants to bring a di direct link to the people of her district and the issues they face daily to Congress. And she she hopes to fight for big ideas like criminal justice reform, policing reform, Medicare and education for all and equal rights. Huge props to that, to Cori Bush. Exciting. That's exciting, right? We're excited about that. Also in the exciting news category, Sarah McBride made history yesterday after she won her Delaware State Senate race, posing, uh, excuse me, poising her to become the first and only openly transgender state senator in U.S. and the countries, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in the U.S. Uh, she's also the highest ranking trans official McBride is a former spokesperson for the LGBTQ advocacy group Human Rights Campaign. While still in college, she interned with the Obama administration, becoming the first out transgender woman to work in the White House. And then she became the first person to speak at a major political convention in 2016 when she addressed Democrats in Philly. Remember that? McBride tweeted Tuesday night after the election was called, I hope tonight shows an LGBTQ kid that our democracy is big enough for them too. How exciting. Ah, and also in New York, the Working Families Party, who Governor Andrew Cuomo has been trying to fit with a nice pair of cement shoes for some time now, uh, will remain on the ballot in New York, showing that New York's progressive movement is actually stronger than ever. Those are just some of the progressive wins. I don't mean to be painting a rosy picture here. We've got a lot of stuff we're going to have to wade through as the death throes, hopefully, of authoritarianism get buried. I even have late a bit of late breaking news here. Um, uh, you know, a Biden campaign manager says that we are going to win Wisconsin. Uh, we, uh, recount or no recount. They're very confident that they have won the state of Wisconsin. Exciting. And also from the Hill, Kansas actually elected Stephanie Byers, uh, making her the first transgender person of color to serve in state legislature. So there's a lot. I also want to bring this image just as a way to, to thank everyone who went out and voted, whether you did it by mail, whether you did it, you know, uh, in person. This is a 99-year-old black man born to a plantation sharecropper, was just one of the record number of voters who turned out yesterday. Uh, he is urging Americans to follow his lead uh, and stay the course. Robert H. Smith of Jackson, Mississippi, says he remembers when he couldn't vote as a result of Jim Crow laws like literacy tests and poll taxes. He's been involved in the racial justice movement for the past 50 years, and he is one of the many heroes that went out and voted during this election. Whew, our fingers are crossed. As of the recording of this progressive news report, uh, we don't exactly know exactly what's happening, except for everything that we, uh, you know, you said what might be happening, and now we're watching unfold, which is Biden is going to win the 270, or Biden is going to win, uh, and and Trump is going to try to stop him in court and with legal shenanigans. But hopefully our democracy will hold, and pretty soon Trump will be out. Keep watching us here on ACT TV. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. We have a number of great shows. And thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. And please share and give us the thumbs up, et cetera, et cetera. I'm Juliana Forlano. You can follow me on Twitter. And we'll see you tomorrow on YouTube.